starting number one and should be first to shoot Evgeny Abramenko and Belarus with uh, a good team it's been uh, a few years since they've been uh, right up there with the best or a few decades probably I should say Novikov uh, he goes off number 44 he could do something good chance to see the climbing and interestingly Abramenko going through of course uh, Rafael Pere, who won the world title on these tracks, is now coaching the Belarus. Still waiting to see the magic come through. They definitely have changed their skiing technique. They're just becoming accustomed to it. Matiasko from Slovakia. As you can see, a strong skier. And uh, both Slovenia and Slovakia seem to have uh, stepped up a level over the last... 12 months lots of help from the ibu as well it's so important for the ibu mike isn't it that that biathlon isn't just about three or four big teams and, and i think the ibu have done a fantastic job they they give grants to nations who don't have coaching knowledge to send ibu trained coaches to give them support and help and, and of course last week in hopfields they had out an awful lot of tracksuit skis equipment Svensson doesn't need any of that. He's got uh, plenty of his own. And uh, he's just started. He's a uh, couple of Ks behind Clement Bauer out on the tracks, just doing V2. Lots of resistance, showing good strength. Some would go down a gear, switch technique. What's, what's your opinion on that, Mike? Well, he, Clement Bauer is so strong. He knows this track well. I would agree. It's changing the gear down into the faster technique is more efficient. You get the flow of energy. Dominic Landertinger sitting in the top 10 of the World Cup standings after far, five races. Uh, I think he probably would have taken that at the beginning of the season. Now Bergman of Sweden. Will it be Bergman? Will it be Lindstrom? Will it be Ferry? One of them usually performs at this stage of the season. Two years ago it was Ferry. Last year, as we've mentioned, it was Bergman. And uh, a good positive start from Carl Johan. Says he's a new man after his experience last year in Roop Holding. He said, Mike, he's now achieved everything he wanted to achieve in biathlon so he can relax. And he's hoping that that brings him good results. Surely you have to set, once you've won a world title, you have to set yourself a new goal. You would think so, but in a sense, I mean, he's 34 year old now. Um, Bergman, he's, as you say, he's achieved most things. It, there's, a, there's a real deep confidence about him when you hear him talking, when you watch him training. I think he's, he's, he's like a... He's like the guru of biathlon now. He's done everything and he still loves this game. And I think we're going to see more titles this year from him. Now Clement Bauer is stepping it up into skate one. It just doesn't have that elegance that uh, some of the, the better skiers. Svensson will look very smooth at that particular section. It looks like a hard grind, but uh, he's still covering the ground pretty well. Art Pfeiffer of Germany. He is now one of the big men after being brought in uh, three years ago as uh, a first timer in Oberhof. Suddenly he finds himself at the top of the German team and especially with Mickey Grice now retired. It's all about Birnbacher and Pfeiffer. It's interesting, isn't it? Two Olympic, former Olympic champions retiring. But before the end of the first two World Cups, they came into this season with intent, but they've had enough and signed out. Now, the Swiss have certainly cracked the cross country. And uh, Dario Colonia leading the way in the cross country uh, World Cup over the last few seasons. Their biathlon certainly getting better, but a little way off the pace of the big four or five nations. So here you see the approach into the range and uh, what is it? 30 seconds of uh, free skiing, essentially, to bring the, the pulse and the breathing under control. It is Thomas Koss looking a little nervous. Interestingly, uh, Bauer is skiing quite a bit off the pace, 13 seconds down coming into the range. Yeah, he was only three seconds down going through 2.2, so he's uh, eased up over the last 500 meters. I guess the whole idea is to make sure he hits the targets. Good start. Little snatch on that last uh, round, but uh, all five have gone down and things going to game plan. De Lorenzi's gone out in 8.49. He was 13 seconds behind. He's still got another 10 metres or so to go. And he switched it round. He's 12 inside. Good work.
Ole Aina Bjorndalen, a man who needs no introduction whatsoever. He's done it all, 93 World Cup wins, and he's looking for number 94. Will it come here? I really think uh, from what we saw on Sunday in the relay, he had the fastest time. It was only by two seconds, and that's with one spare shot. Now, we very seldom see both the horizontal and the vertical uh, sights changed at the same time, but that's good drills from Bergman. Well, he is experienced. He knows the flags. He reads them well. That's indicating the strength of the wind, but hasn't worked for his middle shot. Two breaths in between each round. Clemen Bauer is on one and saving time as a result. And, uh, of course, Bauer hitting all five. So perhaps already we know it's not going to be Bergman's day. Pinter has come into the range 16.2 seconds ahead of Bauer into the range. Well, food for thought, Mike, because uh, Bauer obviously cruising the 500-meter approach into the range area, shooting very quickly and accurately, and those racing into the firing point are paying a price, despite the fact that it is one of the easiest approaches on the World Cup circuit. Now, let's see what Birnbacher does. He's uh, one of the winners of sprints so far this year. He won last week in Hockfilson. That was a good performance. The wind... Uh, it, well, it will certainly create a few problems, Mike, and there's always a bit of a discrepancy between lanes 25 to 30 and 1 to 5. Well, there is, and um, and there's a little vortex in here as well. The, the flags are from the left, close to the firing point, but slightly from the right as you look down towards the target. Where's your money? Oh, he's 92% normally. <laughs> I was about to say he won't miss. Pricey mistake and that glare down the range which says, where did it miss? Why did it miss? Well, he'll find out later on every single round is scoped by the coaches and there'll be a debrief after the race this evening. Now, his teammate, Eric Lesser. Just one click there adjusting into the wind. Hasn't helped him. Just explain why Bergman also use the vertical well if you look at the flags there's a slight pressure from tangent from the top left blowing them down the way so that's the wind pressing down as well so he Bergman raised his sights up to cater for that push down which uh, which that wind is giving the bullet as it flies through second shoot and uh, final shoot in the standing position the sighting not quite so important now big moment for Henrik Lave Lund. He's in the top 30 of the World Cup rankings, but crucially, he is the number five Norwegian at the moment. I love the way Lave Lund, we saw it in the relay. He just, he takes a long time reading the flags. For a young biathlete, I think it's fantastic. Well, one of the least experienced here in the, in the top groupings. Well, that's a good steady shoot. That's more like a, an individual 20-kilometer shoot, Mike. Very deliberate, very cautious, but successful. And uh, it's going to put him up thereabouts with Clement Bauer. He's 0.4 of a second outside. Very, very steady indeed. And uh, the key, obviously, today is to hit every single one of the 10 targets. Interestingly, Labe Loon came into the range 13.2 seconds faster than Clement Bauer, and it just shows the pace in which uh, Clement Bauer shot. Look at the ski time, it's brilliant. Change of the sights for Svensson as well. The briefing in the Norwegian camp. Is one click going to be enough? Nice light trigger action. Good shoot, really good shoot. Could well be a Svensson day. He just has that determination with his foot. 34th last week, he wants to uh, put himself back in the running. Not only that, he is very quick. He's over 10 seconds inside the best, 12.3. That's useful, that's half a penalty loop for Svensson. And if he pushes the pace on this loop, he could find himself in a position where he can miss one and still have a chance of taking the lead. Still an early start for Svensson. He's in that first group, number 13. Still got 90 starters after him, so... Uh, 
difficult to predict at this stage. Well, no one's missed more than one so far. The majority going clear. The fastest of those with a miss is Eric Lesser at the moment. 8.58, he's 34 seconds behind Svensson's leading time. You do often see that, sorry, Patrick, the, the official taking two, you only need two magazines today, five bullets in each, there's only 10 shots fired today. The official asked the athlete, do, do you sure you want to start with four mags? And he said, okay, take two of them out. So away goes Jean-Philippe Le Gallic, the Canadian who won uh, a World Cup earlier on in the year, his first ever win. When he raced here two years ago, he missed five in the sprint event, so hopefully those memories have been erased. Jakob Fack is the man who's drawing the cheers from the crowd because Jakob Fack is having a fantastic season. One of only three men to have been on the podium twice. Is he going to make it a win today? And of course, he won the pursuit in Hogfilsen. Again, the wind changes, Mike. It's definitely much stronger from where the shot fall was. We're moving it almost a centimetre to the right on that strength of wind. And it, this is slowing the pace of your shots down. Each of the athletes we're seeing now in this windier part of the race, oh, it's really tripping up Pfeiffer. Now he's made his adjustments. Oh. Well, I think Mark Korkner will now be uh, getting the radio message out into the, the woods to advise the other German biathletes where the fall of those shots were for them to make their adjustments on their sights. Well, it's a shame we haven't had a close-up as yet. Hallenbach are having the same problems. Large Berger about to start, brought back from the IBU Cup. He's been up and down, Large Berger. Nothing good on the World Cup so far, but he is a potential winner whenever he starts a sprint race. So... Two misses from Hallenbatter, and his chances of uh, a PB have gone. The wind is, is less strong down this side of the range, the far right, lanes 